In today's GBMC A Greater You, many people wait until the final days of life before reaching out to hospice. But if they do that, they may miss out on services that could make a difference. Jason Simic is Chief Access Officer of Gilchrist, and he joins us now with more. Hi, Jason. Hi, good morning, Elsa. How are you? I'm doing well. I'm happy to have you here. You know, since hospice is covered by Medicare, can you just explain how the benefit works and what is actually included? Yes, I can. Uh, hospice is a 100% covered benefit for eligible Medicare beneficiaries, and many people aren't aware of that. And it provides a comprehensive set of resources to include coverage for a physician, for a nurse, for social workers, for chaplains, hospice aides, hospice volunteers, even bereavement support after death, as well as all related medications and medical equipment. So it really is a comprehensive set of care that's afforded to someone when they're deemed eligible by two independent physicians. And what are some of the benefits of starting hospice services earlier? Because again, you know, it's a very difficult time. People might want to put that off until the very last minute, but you say starting earlier, there's some benefits associated with that. There is, and unfortunately in our country, many people do put hospice off way till the last minute because of the obvious sensitive nature of the decision. Um, hospice is a 180 day benefit by Medicare and in our country, uh, the median length of stay of hospice patients is only 18 days. And if you think of the comprehensive set of resources I just described that is afforded to every Medicare beneficiary, um, it takes a while to put those things in place. Mm -hmm. On average, it takes one to two weeks to really have all of those services up in place and stabilize a patient's situation um, to really you know, make the true impact that hospice can offer. So many times patients you know, share with us, their biggest regret is that they didn't engage us sooner. Wow, all right. Well, what are some of the common misconceptions then that people have about hospice so that they don't have that regret? The number one thing that we hear all the time is the misconception that hospice is a place as opposed to a philosophy of care. So most people have this fear that when things are at the most complex in someone's care, that then we're gonna take them away from their loved ones, take them out of their home and put them into, you know, really a, a limiting, you know, situation when it's actually the opposite. The vast majority of hospice patients, greater than 90% receive care in their home or where they are, whether that's a nursing facility, a family member's home, a long-term care setting, uh, and really the hospice benefit with all of the support it offers is designed to support people where they are. And the only time that someone is taken to a different setting, such as one of our inpatient units, is when not only the patient needs that level of care to be safely cared for, but it's also more importantly, it's that the patient and their family want that level of care. And the decision is always theirs. And that, most people don't realize that. That really is a strong uh, misconception because it's one that even I had myself. So I'm sure that many of our viewers feel the same. How does hospice help caregivers and those family members in their homes? What, what happens? Well, it's one of the unique times in healthcare when we really look at the person as opposed to the, the disease. So we look at the needs of the person and with that, the first thing that comes up is the needs of the family and caregivers supporting them. So what happens is really that the, all of those resources that I identified are wrapped around the family, wrapped around the patient and designed to not only educate the family and the patient, but support them with you know the extensive you know needs and support that they uh, desire or require, um, you know to include spiritual care, um, counseling, uh, you know more than just the the basic physical care and medical care that we're accustomed to in the healthcare. Industry. And I know that we can get so much more information if we just visit GilchristCares.org. Correct. That is absolutely correct. We have a dedicated team of people that their entire role is just to pe help people navigate these challenging decisions and, and really figure out what are the best resources that meet their needs based on where they are in their life. All right, Jason Simic, thank you so much. Really enlightening information. We appreciate this. And we'll be right back with more Midday Maryland right after this. Stay tuned.